Karen Myers, and today I want to share with you a couple little bits of trivia about Deep Creek Lake. For instance, any idea how large the lake is? I'll tell you. 3,900 acres. <laughs> That's pretty good size. And there's 65 to 70 miles of shoreline. For probably 30 years of my life, everyone told me that there was 65 miles of shoreline. But when the state of Maryland reassigned dock numbers and they did it according to uh, the mileage that you were from the dam, there's over 70 miles that they actually mapped. So if you're boating on Deep Creek Lake, you won't get bored. There's plenty of little nooks and crannies and coves and places to go and just kind of sightsee and enjoy the nature. You know, we have a regulation here that doesn't allow homeowners to cut the trees next to the water. So where you see grassy lawns, those were done prior to the time that the state of Maryland was involved in uh, regulating Deep Creek Lake. But they do a really good job because we don't want to just see all of the houses when we're in our boat going around. We like seeing the trees and the plants and, and the green. So it's good for the environment and it's good for our eyes as well. I have a book here. This is a book about the Deep Creek Lake founders written by Ed King, a friend of mine. And there's a particular page that I get a lot of entertainment from. So I'm just gonna to read to you a couple little things and then I'll tell you how the lake has changed. So in August of 1938, they published a Deep Creek Lake Association newsletter. And at that time, there were 139 private cottages and 80 cottages for rent, and one permanent camp and seven temporary camps. Now I haven't exactly figured out what the camps are, but we know what cottages are. So contrasting that with today, so remember there were 139 private cottages. Today there's somewhere between five and 6,000 private homes around the lake, and uh, about 12 to 1,300 of those are rental homes. So. That's how the opportunities to come and enjoy Deep Creek have increased since 1938, that is a few years ago. So then, sometimes I get questions about public sewer, what communities are served by public sewer, what have individual septic systems and so forth, so get a load of this one. So in 1938, there were 81 sanitary privies, and you know what a privy is, right? the outhouse. So there were 81 sanitary privies and 52 unsanitary privies and 81 sanitary flush toilets. <laughs> so I thought that's pretty interesting. I was so fascinated by, well, what's the difference between a sanitary privy and an unsanitary privy? Well, it has to do about whether it's enclosed, whether animals can get to it, how protected it is from flies who carry germs around and whether it's near a stream and so forth but if you google unsanitary privies you get a real education <laughs> however probably uh, I'm going to say about 60 to 65 percent of Deep Creek Lake is currently served by the public sewer system uh, less than that has public water but that, that public sewer system came about, it was first introduced in 1986, and it was done in order to preserve the healthful quality of our water here. Uh, we had maybe too many septic systems and it was contaminating uh, the underground water supply. So the sewer system solved that issue in areas that do not have uh, public sewer, have much larger lots so that the density isn't as great and that we can all enjoy the water we drink.